Hello and welcome to the devotion. What would Jesus really do for Friday, April the 1st, April Fool's Day? And here we are. Are we going to be foolish? Because scripture, Jesus calls Satan the prince of this world. Now, there are two things in the passages that we read. The first one, he said, the time has now come for judgment on the world. The prince of this world will be driven out and I will be lifted up from the earth and will draw all people to myself, speaking of his crucifixion. Again, uh, two chapters later, he says, I have much more to say to you, for the prince of the world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what the Father has commanded me to do. So, as we look, Satan is fulfilling a purpose in God's eternal Plan. I remember the first time that it dawned on me, and, and I had one of those frank conversations with God where I went, at the cross, you defeated the work of the enemy in the world. You made it possible for us to go to heaven, and yet you left us here. You didn't take us to heaven, and you left the enemy here. You didn't take him out. Why? Take him out. I'll be happy. Take us out. I'll be happy. Why did you leave both of us here? And what I began to look at in Scripture is that Satan is fulfilling a purpose to more rapidly bring to a head the things that God is doing in the world. The enemy does it because he can't get at God. He wants to destroy the work of God. And the more individuals that he can tempt or that he can bring uh, uh, chaos or catastrophe into their life, but at the, same, the, the happier he is. But the... What is happening is it's bringing everything to a culmination, to a head, much more rapidly than probably would happen otherwise. And God doesn't want us to be stuck here not understanding both good and evil. The reason that Satan has been left, the reason that we are here, the Bible describes this time as a crucible. It is a time that the imperfections are being shown powerfully for what they are and that health and life is being shown powerfully for what it is. The reason when we stand in heaven that all rebellion will be cast down, that we will never end up back in this situation again, is because we will fully know both good and evil. And part of fully knowing evil is allowing the enemy to rapidly and very profoundly bring that to life so that we have that stark contrast. It is a part of perfection, staying perfection for all of eternity. And yet it's hard. But he says, the prince of this world, and he only has the ability to have power in this world if we give it to him. He does not have it, the ability to take it from us. That's the reason uh, over and over Jesus says, stand against him, resist the devil, and he has to stand away from you because he doesn't have power over you unless we give him power. Now Sunday morning, we're going to look extensively at that concept. But at this point, I want you to understand that the reason the enemy is in the world, the prince of this world, because this world gives him power, is because he is rapidly advancing what God wants to do. And we can spend a lot of time being angry about the process, not realizing that it's getting us much quicker to the answer, to the resolution, to being in the presence of God, and that being a state that will never be lost again because we vividly know both good and evil. And he is allowing the enemy to be a process of bringing everything to a head. He says, even at this time, the prince of this world is now acting in my life, and I have to walk out my purpose and my plan in this. So, we've got this dynamic going on. Now, Sunday morning, we're going to talk a lot more about that dynamic and how we thrive even in the middle of a world where the enemy is still active and vibrant and how that's bringing us to the thing that our heart really desires. But at this point, I just want you to understand it is the tension that God is not out of control, he's not freaked out by this, and we shouldn't be either. But we do have to be vigilant. So let's pray. Father, Lord, I know that the prince of this world gets his power because we in this world give it to him. He would have no power other than the fact that we are eager to hear that voice from time to time. We like what the enemy says, and we reject what 
uh, you say. And Father, you're trying to enlighten us, to open our eyes, to see that everything that the enemy is bringing, even if it's pleasurable in the short run, brings death in the long run. We're having to learn that lesson right now. God, help us to learn it quick to resist and understand that the enemy has no power when we don't give that power to him. When we stand with you, he becomes powerless over our lives. God, give us that understanding. Give us that knowledge. Give us that wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll be filling in a whole lot more on this whole topic on Sunday morning. But for right now, just remember, the enemy is serving a purpose in God's bigger plan, but we don't have to be victims to it. We can stand apart from what the enemy is trying to do. More on that Sunday morning.